Hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> you know what? I cannot begin to explain to you how jacked up and excited I am right now. Got here a little bit late this morning. The, the fog is rolling off the water. We had an overnight low of, uh, of 49 last night, it's the first day of fall. And uh, I'm in Western Kentucky, kind of up in the hills and we're in a boggy area. So this is a, 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 a little swamp pond. I did one little quick lap out about 15 or 20 yards and back and got to 23 feet. Don't know if the place holds bass yet. Uh, I find places like this all the time. Sometimes you smash them. Sometimes you, 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 uh, you end up leaving empty handed. That's the thing for me that's the most exciting is exploring these new waters. So we're here in Western Kentucky, right outside of Madisonville. Let's go find out if it holds the big girls like I hope it does. I may need to slow it down and go to a popping frog. Little guy. But when they explode on the toad, they're still fun. I like that. Explode with on the toad. Haha. -ha. Just spooked one off up there. Ah, take it. It's a good fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Sometimes you try to square peg around whole things. Look at that, too. That's a fatty right there. Big old head, fat, healthy gut on it. Pull like a freight train. Little Audi butthole, that means they're feeding. Golly. Pretty fish. So, a lot of times when you have a specific way that you like to fish, you'll sometimes square peg around hole it a little too long. I love the topwater fish. There's no if, ends, or buts about it. But I buzzed three, 400 yards of this edge of this lily pad mat with a horny toad, didn't get a single bite. Threw on a twin tail grub, the double tail grub from Yamamoto on a football jig head, threw it down, caught a small fish. It was getting down too fast because it didn't have enough surface area and punching into the grass. So a trick I like to use a lot is to take a zoom horny toad and rig it onto one of these football heads Sometimes baits need to be thought of outside of what they were designed for, but how they perform, and you can use them in different ways. I use a zoom horny toad quite a bit to swim it below the surface. I think it has a little bit of a bait fish profile. It's long and slender. It looks like a minnow, uh, but it's got a huge surface area. So when it's falling in, it glides slow. And when bass are slow and they're not busting on the top, they really like that slow fall, kind of angled glide presentation, and they'll gobble it up. Oh no, Houston, we have a problem. We are getting low on the toad in black. Got enough to limp through the rest of the day, but that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Not when they're blowing up on it. <laughs> right at the boat yes 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 right at the boat you know one of the things that I get to do when I fish alone is I get to be alone with my thoughts for a lot of folks that know me they probably consider that a dangerous thing probably should have had a salad for dinner last night <laughs> you know I'd eat a lot more salad if like there was a beer flavored salad hmm. need to write that down I'm maybe onto something
you know, when I'm doing any initial assessment of a body of water, I'm going with high percentage presentations the first time I fish it. I'm more interested in learning the body of water, paying attention to my electronics. So if you're watching this from home and you're a bass fisherman, everything with your being is probably screaming, you know, flip the edge here, which makes perfect sense. And if I was here just results oriented and I just wanted to put bass in the boat, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be flipping into these little pockets. This bank drops sharply off to, I'm in nine foot of water right here and it's probably six foot right up underneath the pad. So that sharp drop off, this mat on the surface, those bass are definitely tucked up underneath there. Just keep in mind when you're fishing a place like this or when you're assessing a new place, kind of learning the lay of the land is usually my first priority. And then I come back and zero it in and find out what's the most effective way to fish it. Ooh. What the? Seriously? <laughs> uh, well, the there's the first crappie of the day. Holy cow. Look at the size of that. Oh, the guy's like that big. And the bait's three quarters his size. Well, we're on the board with the crappie. A lot of times if they're blowing up on the top and I don't get a blow up the first time that I throw like a toad or a stick bait or something, I'll switch it up and go back through with a swim bait. But this bass has actively blew up on the top three or four times so he's kind of telling you he's willing to feed on the surface and anytime I can get him to eat the top water, I would rather do it that way. Anytime I'm going somewhere that I plan on spending the entire day on the water, I want a kayak that's gonna be comfortable for that long day in the sitting position and in the standing position. So a kayak that you have to focus all day long on being stood up is not comfortable. A kayak that you're constantly worried about whether or not if you set the hook and miss, you're going out the other side is not something that invokes confidence. So the Wilderness Systems Attack is a boat that you can sit in comfortably, you can stand in comfortably. It's easy to rig with a plethora of pre-rig solutions and mounting places. It's equipped for yak attack accessories, ram accessories, pre-set up for a power pole on the back, easy to mount a torpedo. The, the rigging options with this kayak are unlimited. So if you're looking to spend all day on the water like we have here, if you're looking to fish in numerous conditions, check out the Wilderness Systems Attack.